Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Sorry I did not do a video last week. I am under some pretty tight deadlines uh, lately and uh, I can't even guarantee that I'm going to be able to deliver a full video every single week in the months ahead. But I'll be doing my best for you, I promise. Uh, today we're going to be talking about adding color and comparing four different ways of adding color. I've drawn basically the same little snow creature. Looks like one of those Totoro, like a mini Totoro. Uh, character made out of snow, and I'm going to be using four different methods of adding color, starting with marker, moving on to colored pencil, we're going to do watercolor here, and then finally pastel. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open this Pantone marker, which happened to be uh, the shade that I was looking for, a blue. Uh, incidentally, when you're adding uh, shadows to a uh, snowman or some white uh, object, um, in the outdoors, especially, uh, it's very common to make the shadows with blue rather than uh, gray. I think it's kind of the sky being reflected in the uh, snow. Might be the explanation for that. I'm not. I'm not a physicist, so I can't be sure. But <laughs> anyway, this is showing you how when you use uh, markers you very often end up with this very clean line. Now, uh, some people who are uh, better at markers than I am uh, have ways of using uh, blending markers and so forth to get a more subtle, um, you know, gradual ch change from blue over to uh, white. But I thought, uh, really, uh, the purpose of this video is to kind of compare and contrast and not have the coloring styles all look the same. So I thought for the um, marker version, I would sort of deliberately keep it like a nice clean line there because I think markers naturally do that well. And we're going to see with uh, the very next uh, coloring style that um, we are looking for something much more gradual and that is indeed what the colored pencil allows us to do. Now this one I'm going to start out real time, but I'm probably going to quickly kick it into time lapse. It's going to be the one that I don't think I can do all real time. Just because um, colored pencil, at least the way I do it, is a very um, incremental, gradual uh, coloring process, and that is really its uh, strength from my point of view. It allows you absolute control. So if you're a control freak, I would say a uh, colored pencil is the method for you. It allows you to, you know, find your way to the final uh, color very gradually, very slowly, um, without really risking anything almost. You're, you're uh, building it up little by little. Uh, again, this is one way of doing it. Some people will be much more gutsy with their colored pencil and just go right in with, you know, cross hatching or whatever. But um, for me, uh, colored pencil, the, the, the glory of it is that level of control, the subtlety. Um, what happens with uh, colored pencil, though, is that you end up with tiny little white specks, almost imperceptible to the human eye. But they are indeed showing through from the page beneath. You know, that I think, the uh, again, the, the grit of the paper... Um, causes the uh, colored pencil to sort of break apart a little bit. If you were to, you know, go in here with a magnifying glass, I think you would see um, that it's almost composed of little dots. Whereas with the um, marker, I think it's much more of a solid color um, because it just soaks into the paper uh, every square centimeter of it. So there's like trade-offs between these two different techniques. Now, like as you can see, I'm just taking way longer to uh, add this color uh, with the colored pencil just because of um, that incremental approach. So let's kick it into time lapse. Old man, time lapse. Can you save me? Yes, I'm here to rescue you from your own boring narration. Thank you, thank you, good sir. Let's go ahead and kick it into time lapse and finish off the uh, colored pencil coloring.
All right, so you can see how colored pencil allows you um, really as much subtlety as you want, you know, uh, depending on how much time you're willing to put into it. And this kind of relates more to um, adding shadows to objects, but I just thought I'd point out that you can see I darkened in this area right here uh, and uh, allowed this area to remain kind of light. Um, in fact, you could even go in uh, with an e -pencil, a pencil eraser and lighten it up further. Um, to suggest reflected light off the snow. But that really has more to do with um, drop shadows and that kind of thing. Also, you know, the, um, uh, the darkest part of the shadow being closest to the base of the object. You're getting two different videos in one here, really. This one talking an awful lot about adding drop shadows to little snowmen creatures. But let's move on to the next one, and this one's going to be fun. It's going to be watercolor, and I'm just uh, bringing over a uh, cup full of water and my super messy <laughs> dish of uh, watercolors, which I've had ever since I was, uh, I think, in college. My, my mother gave it to me, and I've been using it ever since. But I'm uh, mixing up a um, simple shade of uh, blue here, and we're going to try to uh, add the shadow with watercolor in a way that reflects how watercolor is different from these other uh, media. Is that what I should say? Coloring media? So, um, what happens with watercolor is you've got this period of time after you lay it down on the paper, that it remains um, loose and it's like it's sort of floating on top of the paper. It hasn't completely soaked in yet. And you've got a moment during this initial phase when you can sort of dry out your brush, which I just did using a piece of tissue paper, and then you can go back in and you can uh, get rid of that harsh line there, right? If you don't want to have the, the, that clean line along there. And, um, but the interesting thing about watercolor is that it's not done. You know, the process is still uh, taking place. As it dries, the color changes, and it does, to my eyes, sort of magical watercolor stuff. Um, that it, it never looks the same when it's dry as it does during those first moments when you put it down on the paper. Um, to, I feel that it acquires a beauty as it dries that is kind of beyond your control. It's almost like a gift. You know, you drop this uh, color on there, and then as it dries, it begins to just sort of do its thing. And I'm always, I've always been sort of pleased with how watercolor gives you this, this professional look that can only be achieved by real watercolor. I mean, they, they try to imitate it with uh, computer programs these days, but it's never going to be quite the same as actual watercolor in terms of what it's doing. And uh, again, it, it's a slow process. As it dries, I may have to hit sort of pause on the video camera to let it fully dry so that you can see what I'm talking about. But there's just this, um, you know, as you contrast these, you can see me sort of pushing the color around and I'm like drawing it from here and, and forcing it to go over. That's sort of unique to watercolor. You've got this period of time during which it's still loose and still uh, can be played around with. In fact, I, I might uh, risk dropping in a little extra color here before it's completely dried to see if I can emulate that kind of uh, darker bit right there that uh, suggests reflected light down here off of the snow. But, you know, it's possible to have perfectly clean, smooth color uh, with watercolor, but I always figured, no, that's not what watercolor is about. You know, part of the glory of watercolor is that uh, slightly splotchy, what I would call beautiful splotchiness. And uh, I always want to embrace that splotchiness. Embrace the splotchiness, Luke. Don't fight it. Let it have that organic 
um, look. And so there you go. Watercolor, always going to be its own thing when it comes to adding color. And if you fall in love with it, this might be your thing. Um, it is, it's, you know, compared to colored pencil, I, showed, I told you like colored pencil was this very gradual, you know, control freak kind of thing. You have to be willing to let go a little bit, I think, with watercolor. And with our next one, and I think I will, I don't think I need to hit pause. I'm just going to pull out the uh, pastel. I'm sorry if I knocked the camera. Come on, Crowley. Uh, this one should go quite quickly, and I'm taking a piece of dry um, pastel, not oil pastel. Uh, and what I love about oil pastel, at least my technique, is that um, it's the first thing you put down is not what it's going to end up looking like. In fact, you can let it just look a little crummy at first. You know, it's like I'm not trying to make beautiful coloring here because I'm going to go back in and smear it. Uh, and I just go right in with my fingers, actually, to, to do the final effect. Whereas some people might get a blending stick, I suppose, if you, if you want uh, real precision. But again, I, I like to sort of embrace the organic quality of the uh, pastel. So I think we can all agree, this doesn't look so great. But I'm going to take out my finger, the magic of the finger. No, it's the magic of the pastel, really that it allows you to start really getting this foggy, smoky effect. See how I'm doing that? And uh, again, I'm saying that's not anything to do with me having amazing technique. It's just a natural thing that pastel does. As you smear it around, it has this. Now, a lot of people would say, hey, don't you want to stay within the lines? And I suppose normally, yeah, but in this case, I'm thinking, no, let's... Uh, Let's let it fade outside the lines and embrace that aspect of pastel, which really does not want to stay within the lines, and it becomes a different, you know, has a soft kind of smoky look to it. Now, I feel like I've gone a little too far with the darkness up here, so I am going to come in with my eraser and uh, try to pick some of that off. But you can see what I mean. I would say that the pastel and the watercolor are the two sort of more organic coloring media that um, the human touch is in evidence, even just with a casual glance. You feel that sort of handcrafted aspect of it. Whereas with colored pencil, you know, you're going for this more three-dimensional look. It becomes very clean, but maybe a little less um, organic looking. Uh, and then marker, I think, can, is maybe the cleanest of them all. So I'm going to try again to get that effect. See what, what does that effect look like when we try it with the uh, pastel. The uh, reflected light look. And uh, we're basically coming down to the end of the video. Now, I know that people will not let me end this thing without adding blushies. And this time we have four different uh, media, so I'm going to challenge my... This is the blushy challenge, people. I am going to try to add the blushies with the four different uh, coloring media. But uh, I'm kind of cheating because I don't want this uh, marker to be quite so dark. I feel like it would mess it up, so I've grabbed a, a different marker to add, hopefully, subtle little blue-green blushies to that one. Colored pencil, of course. For the control freak in us all, you can just very gradually add a little bit. Does, does snow produce blushies? Can a snow creature have blushies? They can now. And, uh oh, I almost forgot. i got to do watercolor. Am I ready? I'm going to actually gra grab a smaller brush here and uh, see if I can do precision blushies on this little guy. Might be a little dark. What do you think? Did I overdo it? Did I over blushy it? <laughs> and finally, the pastels. I don't know how to do this. Maybe I should have had a blending stick.
What? It's the curse of the blushies. Why do I always have to add blushies? And there you go. There's the four different uh, techniques compared, and I hope that you will uh, find this video helpful. But I think it's time for me to go ahead and grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who's supported me by getting them, like Mastering Manga, my book on how to draw in the manga style, the Chibi book, focused entirely on drawing in the Chibi style, and my very latest book, The Two Pencil Method. I really cannot say thank you often enough to those of you who choose to support me by ordering any of my books. I really do greatly appreciate it. Let's see if I can lay down all of them at once. I'm going to get the brush. The marker. This is going to be the lay down fest. I think it's time for me to lay down this marker and this brush and this other marker and oh my goodness, where's the colored pencil and the colored pencil? Oh, you can't even see anything anymore. But I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back with another one real soon.